Hello and welcome to another episode of the FTM Printed SLA Printer. This time we built the UV light box. But first let's have a look on the parts that we need. Well, we need some thermal adhesive tape, 4 high power UV LEDs, 12 volts, 10 watts, 405 nanometer wave length, 3D printed parts UVA and UVB, an aluminium heatsink, 130 mm by 56 mm by 20 mm, a fan 40 by 40 by 10 mm, 12 volts, a bunch of M3 by 10 mm screws, some more 3D printed parts, UV reflector, base core, base hull. Furthermore, it's helpful to have a screwdriver, an iron wrench key, and some waterproof marker. Without a decent amount of cooling, our high power LEDs will become pretty hot with the risk of destroying himself or the other components. Therefore, our high power LEDs will reside on top of an aluminium heatsink, which will be placed inside an air channel, which has two open ends on each side with a fan on one side attached. That fan will be pulling fresh cool air from the one side and push out the hot air from the LEDs on the other side. But before we can install our four high power LEDs, we need to find out which spot on top of the aluminium heatsink is available for placement. Therefore, we roughly temporarily assemble all relevant components of the printer body and just set some marks on the available spot for the LEDs. This includes a temporary installation of the UV reflector frame inside the core component. Well, at that point it's pretty easy to identify the available spot for the installation of the LEDs and make some marks with our marker. Also we make some marks uh, to remember later on where the spot is where the uh, wire for the power supply of the LEDs comes in.
just be aware that the available spot is never exactly centered relative to the heatsink. This is because we need some additional space on one of the sides for installation of the fan. And due to the lack of symmetry, it's most important to be aware of the orientation for the wiring of the power supply because we will not be able to flip it just by 180 degrees later on. This is also why we made the mark where the wire need to be attached. Also be aware that the LEDs have a plus and a minus pole. That kind of LED have imprints on the left and the right side that show a minus or a plus sign. To reduce the effort when we're wiring the LCDs, it makes sense to align the plus and minus poles of the LEDs. We mount the LEDs on top of the heatsink by the use of thermal adhesive tape. This is most important. Don't get with cheap, ordinary, double-sided adhesive tape. It must be specific thermal adhesive tape to make sure that the heat of the LEDs can be transferred to the heatsink. To maximize the heat dissipation, make sure that the piece of adhesive tape covers the whole bottom of the LED.
Now let's do some wiring. Due to the high power consumption and high current flow, we need to use wires of adequate thickness. First we put some solder on the solder pads of the LEDs. Then we cut a piece of two lead isolated wire to the right length. Approximately 30 centimeters should be fine. As mentioned a couple of times before, the power cable should uh, be attached uh, at the right spot that we marked before. Well, the rest of the wiring is pretty easy. Basically, all we need to do is to connect all the plus poles of all LEDs together and all minus poles of all LEDs together and to interconnect them with the incoming power cable and their corresponding plus and minus poles. Okay, let's speed up things a little bit.
Well, almost done. Time to remove some of the isolation at the other end of the power cable. Time for some test. Yeah, success! All four LEDs are powered and light up. Time for final assembly of the UV light box. Time to install the completed UV light box into the bottom of the printer body. Well, that's basically all that needs to be done to get the UV light box built and installed into the base of the printer body. I hope you found the information helpful and I'm looking forward to see you maybe next time uh, with another episode of the FTM Printed SLA Printer. Goodbye!